All right, what we're looking at here is being given a description of a graph and its derivative and being asked to sketch a possible version of it. And I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this in the past that um, this was a SAT question last year and it was a very easy four marks or something like that. So what we're looking at is the information they give us in the question about the derivative, so f dash dx, and also about the original function, um, certain things to do with domains and things like that. So we're having a look at this, so it says that f dash negative 1 equals 0, so that tells us that the derivative f dash of x is 0 at x equals negative 1. So that tells me that the derivative, and we're going to do the derivative in blue, at negative 1 is at 0. It also tells us that when f dash of x equals 3, so when um, x equals 3, the derivative equals 0. So at 3, it equals 0. Now, it tells us that, um, so I'm just concentrating on the derivative. So it looks at the derivative, derivative. Now, it also tells us the derivative is greater than 0 when x is less than 1. Well, sorry, when x is less than 81. So if it's more than 0, then it is above the x-axis. So it's going to look like that. Then f of x is, um, so it's greater than 0. The derivative is less than 0 for x uh, between negative 1 and 3. So it is below 0 in this area here. So it's going to do something like it may go down. So that's what we've got there. So it's below the x axis. So we're trying to make it follow. I'm um, trying to make it follow 1. So it is starts off above, it reaches negative 1, it hits 0, and then it carries on beneath 0. Now, then the last thing it does, it tells us that it is greater than 0, so it's positive for all values of x greater than 3. So it is going to be like that. Now, we've got a bit of a problem here in terms of discontinuity, so we're going to fix that up a little bit. And rather than drawing that middle part, rather than drawing um, this part which was here, I'm going to finish off the rest of it and say it's going to do that. And then in the middle, it's going to do something like that. So that's what it tells me there. Now, so that's everything to do with the derivative. So f dash of x, f dash of x, uh, f dash of x, and f dash of x, and f dash of x. Now, they tell us another piece of information. At f equals 3, it equals 0. So something significant happens to our function there. So if we have a look at this, so this tells us that we have to have a turning point there, and we have to have a turning point there. So, if our gradient function is positive, that means that our original function has to be increasing. So, it's going to be increasing. Doesn't matter what it looks like. So, I'll remove that red. So, our f of x has to be increasing until it reaches that point. At that point, it's got to decrease. Because from here, to 3, it's negative, so it's got to slope downwards. What they tell us is that at this point, it's another turning point. And then we end up going upwards. So our graph will look something like this. Where we're here at negative 1, and we're here at 3. So, and that relates to the, um, to the information we've given. The turning point, the gradient is 0 here, so it's, we've got a turning point. The gradient is 0 at 3, so we've got a turning point. It also tells us that f dash to 3 is 0, so the function passes through that point there. Um, then it tells us that between negative infinity to 1, so all this, so negative infinity to 1, the gradient is positive, it is, it's going upwards. Between... Now we represent that, um, and then between 1 and negative 3, it slopes downwards, negative gradient. Between 3 and infinity, it once again slopes upwards, positive gradient. We represent that um, on the derivative function by saying it's greater than 0, greater than 0, it's less than 0, it's less than 0, greater than 0, greater than 0. So that's how we can look at a derivative, information about the gradient, and determine a possible function.